In this video, we're going to look at some more advanced examples on proving trigonometric identities. So just to recap one or two things that we dealt with in the last video, and that is the fact that the main identities that we are given for grade 11 are these over here. So we know that tan theta is sine theta over cos theta, and we know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. And you guys will remember from the previous video that I spoke about this second identity quite a bit more than the first because there were so many different variations of it. So we could obviously go and move that cos squared over, and if we did that, we would get sine squared theta is 1 minus cos squared theta. Likewise, if we move the sine squared over, we would be left with cos squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. And in both of these cases, we knew that dots was there. It was a difference of two squares. So those were a few things that we looked at in the previous video. And we also spoke about the main things that you would be looking out for when you were attempting questions like this was firstly to change tan to sine over cos. We were also on the lookout for things like factorization. And by now you should know how to factorize trig expressions, as well as dealing with fractions by finding a lowest common denominator. And we're going to look more at these two bits of information in this video, as well as a couple of other tricks that you can be on the lookout for. As I said previously, this way of questioning you guys is quite tough. And the questions that you get asked can get difficult. So throughout this video, rather sit and watch what I'm doing first, and then go back and reattempt these questions on your own with the new methods that you've learned. So the first example that we've got here is tan x plus sin x over tan x minus sin x is equal to 1 plus cos x squared over sin squared x. So to begin, we always go and write out left hand side. So we've got our left hand side equal to tan x plus sine x all over tan x minus sine x. First thing to always look at is the number of terms we have. So in the numerator, we've got 1, 2, and in the denominator, we've got 1, 2. 2. So before we can attempt to move forward in this question, we either need to perform some sort of factorization or fraction work that allows us to reduce the number of terms so that we can cancel things out. But looking straight away at this, normal algebra can't help us. So when normal algebra can't help us, that's when we go towards our identities. So we've got two tans there and no tans in the right hand side. So we're going to change those tans to sine over cos. So we've got a tan there. So it would become sine x over cos x. And remember, this is all in the numerator now, plus sine x. So this entire piece we've just worked out over here, that's the numerator over the denominator, which is sine x over cos x minus sine x. So with what we've got at the moment, we can do one of two things. We could either factorize out a sine x in both the numerator and the denominator, or we could use lowest common denominators first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factorize out that sine x. So I'm pulling out a sine x in the numerator. I'm going to be left with 1 over cos x, because if I take a sine x out of here, I'm left with the cos at the bottom. So 1 over cos x plus 1, because if we take sine x out of here, we are left with 1. And that will all be over sine x, again, pulling it out, is going to be 1 over cos x minus 1. And now we can actually cancel those signs out, and then 
go ahead and do normal fraction work. So in here, we can find a lowest common denominator, which you see is going to be cos x. And we can do the same thing down here, where our LCD will also be cos x. So when we do that, we are left with 1 plus cos x over cos x. That's our numerator. All over 1 minus cos x over cos x. Continuing with this question now, we can go ahead and tip in times. So we're going to have 1 plus cos x over cos x multiplied by, when we tip in times, it's going to be cos x over 1 minus cos x. Those cancel out. And we left with 1 plus cos x over 1 minus cos x. Problem is, when we go and refer back to where we started, we can see that it doesn't match up. So when it doesn't match up, that's when we go to dealing with the right-hand side. So it's in very few circumstances that we will deal with the right-hand side, but this is one of them where we're going to have to. So our right-hand side then, looking carefully at the two, you can see that we've got a 1 plus cos x in the left-hand side, and we've actually got a 1 plus cos x over there. The only difference is it's squared. So because of that fact, and a bit of foresight, we're going to say to ourselves, well, we're not going to foil this bracket. We're not going to go and foil that out because we already have what we want. So foiling it out is just going to make our life more difficult. So we leave it for the time being. But what we can also notice is that there's a sine x over here. And on this side, we have no sine x. So is there anything that we can substitute in over here? that has cos in it? Well, yes, we know we've got an identity that says sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cos squared x. So doing that, we will get out 1 plus cos x all squared over 1 minus cos squared x. Additionally, we know that this is an example of a difference of two squares. So if that's the case, we can factorize the bottom and we will get 1 plus cos x all squared over 1 plus cos x, 1 minus cos x. Now, the denominator will cancel there with one of the numerators and we will be left with then 1 plus cos x over 1 minus cos x. And now you can see that we've got a match there and there. So therefore we can say that left hand side equals right hand side. So a slightly difficult example where what we had to do was put all of our information together, look to the future as we did over here. So looking back on this question then, we can clearly see that even though it was quite a tough question, it is quite doable by simply following all the rules that we've been looking out for. We looked out for factorizing. We looked out for substituting in different identities, different variations of the identity like over here, as well as using factorization. So it all came together in this question. A very nice question as well for you to go and practice on your own. So let's have a look now at the second example. So here's the second example where we've got, again, prove that sine theta cos theta over 1 plus cos theta is equal to 1 minus cos theta over tan theta. So dealing with a question like this, First thing you should probably notice is that when starting on the left hand side, we don't have any identities. We've got nothing in either the numerator or the denominator. So if I wrote that out, sine theta, 
cos theta over 1 plus cos theta, we have no identities to use. We've got no sine squared plus cos squared. We've got no tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. So when you encounter something like this, it's your job to force an identity to appear. So whenever you're confronted with a situation like this, you need to force an identity to appear. And the technique that we use here, and you can go and look it up, it is quite important for grade 12 as well, is to multiply by a factor of 1. So this is the technical term for it, multiplying by a factor of 1. And what that basically means is that any mathematical expression we get, if we multiply it by 1, it doesn't change. But we also know that we could write 1 in different ways. So for example, I could multiply this equation by 10 over 10, because 10 over 10 is 1. So technically speaking, because this is 1, I'm not changing the expression. So we can go and pick any number that we want and multiply it to this expression that then will make it a little bit easier for us or introduce an identity for us. And the way that we will generally do that is by looking at the denominator and then multiplying the denominator by the exact same thing but just changing the sign. Now that's called a conjugate. You don't need to know that. If you do AP maths, you've probably heard it before. But what we do is we look at the denominator, we multiply it by itself, simply changing the sign. But because it has to be multiplied by 1, we have to do it in the numerator and the denominator. So we would multiply it by 1 minus cos theta. And the reason that works, just to recap, is this whole piece is simply 1. And multiplying anything by 1 doesn't change the expression. And then, as you can see as well, we've changed that sign. So doing that, we can multiply it out. Obviously, you know that there is a bracket around that before you can multiply it. So when we do that, we would get sine theta times cos theta and then our numerator is 1 minus cos theta that we've just introduced over the denominator which would become 1 plus cos theta that's what we have over here multiplied by 1 minus cos theta now what we've done at the bottom is actually introduce a difference of two squares and that's what's going to make our life more simpler. Because we know that once we use that difference of two squares and the different variation of this identity over here, it's going to simplify quite nicely for us. So in the numerator, we're going to have sine theta times cos theta. And then 1 minus cos theta. Ask yourself the question now, why am I not multiplying this numerator out just yet? Because look. We've got 1 minus cos theta on the right-hand side, and there's our 1 minus cos theta there. So would it really make sense to multiply it out just yet? No, it wouldn't. Over, and then we've got at the bottom, using our difference of two squares, we'd get 1 minus cos squared theta, using dots. And we know that 1 minus cos squared theta is equal to sine squared theta from our squares identity. Go and look at the variations on how we got that. And so we can write it then out as sine theta times cos theta 1 minus cos theta over sine squared theta. We have one term in the numerator and one term in the denominator. So now we can cancel. Always count your terms, so it cancels with the 2, and we're going to be left with cos theta times 1 minus cos theta 
all over sine theta. But just to make you guys a little bit more aware on how we could have written this out, is like this. I could write this out as cos theta over sine theta times 1 minus cos theta over 1. Now you don't have to do this, but it just shows more clearly this piece over here. And you'll know then that sine theta over cos theta equals tan theta. So and if I invert that, we get that cos theta over sine theta is 1 over tan theta. And you'll remember I asked you to write that down in the previous video. And here's why it's useful, because that cos theta over sine theta can simplify to 1 over tan theta times 1 minus cos theta over 1, which simplifies to 1 minus cos theta over tan theta. And that is exactly what we have in the right-hand side. So therefore, we can conclude that left-hand side equals right-hand side. So, looking back at this example, to summarize it for ourselves, we know that we have got an identity in the beginning over here that has none of these in it. So because of that, I had to force one to appear by multiplying it by that factor of 1. Once I multiplied it by that factor of 1, I was able to introduce my 1 minus cos squared identity, which simplified to sine squared, and then simply doing some basic algebra, I can prove it's equal to the right-hand side. Let's move on to example number 3 then. In this example over here, again the question is saying to us, prove that 1 minus 2 sine x cos x over sine x minus cos x equals sine squared x minus cos squared x over sine x plus cos x. Be very careful when viewing this over here. It's got a minus in the middle, so we know it's not the square's identity. And we write out our left-hand side, and we've got 1 minus 2 sine x times cos x over sine x minus cos x. And we're thinking to ourselves, well, immediately I'm not noticing any of my identities. But there's another trick here, because we've got a 1 over there. And we know that 1 is equal to sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. So I could actually go and introduce sine squared x plus cos squared x where I see a 1. And if I do that, whilst I'm looking ahead, I'll see that then I might actually be able to factorize something. So I will do that and introduce the 1 there. So where I see 1, I swap it out with sine x sine squared plus cos squared, so we'll get sine squared x plus cos squared x plus, or minus rather, minus 2 sine x times cos x all over sine x minus cos x. And just simplifying a little bit at the top, I'd like to rewrite it rather as sine squared x minus 2 sine x times cos x plus cos squared x all over sine x minus cos x. And hopefully now you can see that at the top we've basically got x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. And that would be fairly easy to factorize. And so we can do it in pretty much the same way here, where we would get sine x minus cos x sine x minus cos x. And I can simply write that as sine x minus cos x all squared over 
sine x minus cos x. And so that can simplify to sine x minus cos x. But looking at what we originally started with, we've got sine x plus x. We've got a denominator. So we've got two options now. We can go and work with the right-hand side, or we can use something that I showed you in the previous question, and that was to multiply by a factor of 1. So when you redo this question after the video, go ahead now and simplify the right-hand side and see what you get. But I'm going to reinforce the idea of multiplying by that factor of 1. So I need to have sine x plus cos x in the denominator. So let me just introduce it. I can force it to be there. So I can force it by saying sine x plus cos x over sine x minus cos x. Sine x plus cos x at the bottom there. And when I do that, you'll see then that in the numerator, we've got dots and we've now got the denominator that we want. And so when we do that, our final answer comes out as sine squared x minus cos squared x over sine x plus cos x. And that is exactly what we had over there. So grade 11s, again, we've looked at a few tough questions now. Just summarizing this one, we changed the 1 to sine squared plus cos squared. We were then able to factorize the numerator by using an advanced trinomial. And you, if you go and watch the video on factorizing trigonometric expressions, you'll understand exactly how I factorize that. I got to this step over here where we cancelled out and were simply left with sine x minus cos x. What normally would happen then, I would move over to the right hand side and simplify until it matched up. Or alternatively, in this case, I multiplied by this factor of 1. And by multiplying by 1, I got my denominator and I got my numerator.